Good morning. Dora Lejeune, real estate agent with Real Broker in South Louisiana, more specifically Acadiana, Acadia Parish, and my favorite hometown where I live and work mostly, Iota, Louisiana. Um, listen, this is absolutely a huge misconception and one that I absolutely had before I got into real estate five and a half years ago is this. If you are lucky enough to live in Louisiana, our whole state is in a flood zone, all right? That is something I did not know, I had no idea. And when I was a brand new real estate agent and I would list a home, I would say, not in a flood zone. That was not accurate. All of Louisiana is in a flood zone. If you are lucky enough to be in flood zone X, X, I always remember this, X means you do not have to have flood insurance. Every single insurance company recommends that you have flood insurance, no matter where you live in Louisiana, because we're so close to um, the coast and we're low in lots of areas, but the whole state of Louisiana is in a flood zone, okay? If you're in flood zone X, you are just not required to have flood insurance. So I think about it like this, X is the top, the highest elevation, right? And if you think about it under X, which is a little bit lower elevation is A. A, you are required to have flood insurance if you're in zone A. Underneath A, which is even a little bit lower and a lot of times even a lot more expensive for flood insurance is A, E. Most of Acadiana falls into either X, where you're not required to have flood insurance, A or AE, the vast majority of Acadiana. If you go lower and you get closer to the coast, a lot of those areas are in what's called V. And you're talking mm, insane amounts of flood insurance is required. The closer you get to the coast, the lower the elevation, the higher your flood insurance policy will be. And that's why you do not see a whole, whole, whole lot of new construction going on down there. You don't see a whole lot of homes being sold down there because not that people can't afford the houses. They can easily afford the houses. But when you throw in the homeowner's insurance, which is astronomical simply because it's closer to the coast, and listen, there's a huge difference in, in home insurance premiums north of I-10 as opposed to south of I-10. The numbers are unrecognizable and it's so, so sad for people. You know, there's lots and lots and lots of people that live south of I-10. And so the more south you are of I-10, generally, the higher your insurance premiums are and the more your flood insurance is. Now, think about um, all those new subdivisions that are going up in Dusan and some parts of Broussard and Youngsville, all of those places, if you don't remember in 2016, lots of those places were under a substantial amount of water and they were deemed to be in flood zones. Well, this is what happens with those subdivisions. What they do is they get in touch with the federal government and they determine how high does the elevation of those subdivisions have to be so that they can get what's called a LOMA so that buyers do not have to have flood insurance. And listen, y'all know as well as I do that flood, that, um, that subdivision on Oddfellows Road uh, in Crowley on the way to Walmart. If y'all remember in 2016, that whole area where that subdivision now is was all underwater. So what did that subdivision have to do? They had to build up so high so that the elevation was high enough to take it what's considered out of the elevation area that flood insurance is required. And so those people in that, in that subdivision do not have to have flood insurance. Now, should they? 
you know, that's really up to them. Every insurance company will tell you, yes, they should, right? Um, and so, but they built it up high enough so that those people did not have to have a flood insurance policy. And they have a huge retention pond in the backyard that the water can flow into. So they done, they have done lots of things, but lots and lots and lots of subdivisions. If you pull it up on a flood map, which you can go to FEMA, the FEMA website and put in FEMA flood zones by address or the LSU um, flood map by address. Now, FEMA, that, um, FEMA determines if you're in a flood zone. And I'm telling you, I've had plenty of, plenty of situations where if I pull up a home on the FEMA flood map, it's not in a flood zone. If I pull it up, I mean, it is in a flood zone. If I pull it up on LSU map, the LSU flood map is showing that it's not in a flood zone. Well, flood insurance is required if FEMA says that the house is in a flood zone, not if the LSU flood map shows it. So if you're looking at the LSU flood map and maybe the house that you wanna buy is on the lawn and it's very close to the flood zone area, the best indication for you to know is to pull it up on FEMA, the FEMA flood map, put in the address of the house and look it up. And usually what happens is if it's in A or AE, it's gonna show blue water in that area. If it's in X, then it's not going to show blue water. It's going to show just land, just land. So when you pull up an address on FEMA uh, flood maps, if the house or the land is showing water around it, then there's a good possibility that it's in an area where flood insurance will be required. Now, something to think about. In the flood of 2016, you know, I'm sure y'all remember this, that we had 10 straight days of rain where it just rained and rained and rained and rained and all the waterways were full. There was nowhere for water to flow anymore. And so lots of homes flooded. Lots of homes actually flooded because of passerbys in front of the houses that would just, that would just make the water go into the houses from, from just passing on those streets and such. But in 2016, there were lots and lots and lots of places that flooded that were not even in flood zones. Those people did not have to have a flood insurance policy and they did not. And there were also quite a few places in flood zones, the houses didn't take in any water at all. So when you're going to look for a house, what I say to people is listen, if your house didn't flood in 2016 with the 10 straight days of rain, the, the likelihood of it ever taking in water or flooding are probably slim to none. Now, that's just my opinion, of course. I can't guarantee that by any means. But listen, things that no one ever thought were going to flood took in water in 2016. Um, when you're looking to buy a home, the seller must fill out something that's called a property disclosure that you as the buyer have the right to read. And one of the questions on it is going to say, has the flood or the, has the land ever taken in so much water in such a way that it didn't drain off? Has the house ever taken in any water, right? And listen, it doesn't matter if that home took in an eighth of an inch of water, they must disclose that the home took in some water at all. Listen, some houses, maybe a back bedroom just took in water and the whole house did it. But all of those things, they have to disclose on the property disclosure. It is absolute law that they disclose it. And that does not mean that if they're for sale by owner, they're exempt from filling out this property disclosure. For sale by owner people have to fill out a property disclosure and most of them don't know that, but they can be sued if they do not fill one out and present it to the buyer of the house. A seller must disclose every single thing about that house. If they're working with the real estate agent, when you go to look at that house, the real estate agent is gonna show you the property disclosure and it's gonna ask you, has the home ever flooded? Has it taken in any water? Have you ever had any kind of damage from rising water? All those questions. Now listen, some sellers aren't honest, but if you as a buyer believe that they weren't honest, all you have to do is ask the neighbors. Listen, the neighbors will always rat them out. Listen, you say to the neighbors, has your house ever taken in water? Has your neighbor's house ever taken in water? They'll tell you, that, that's for sure. So flood zones, the whole state of Louisiana is in a flood zone. If you're in X, you probably do not have to have flood insurance. If you're in A, you probably have to have some. If you're in AE, you probably have to have a lot. 
if you're buying a house that's in a flood zone, one thing to ask the sellers is, do you have a flood insurance policy and will you transfer it? Because lots of times the sellers have a flood insurance policy that's way lower than what you're going to find right now from anyone else. And most of the time a seller will say, absolutely, it's transferable. You can have the policy. You can keep the policy and it goes with the house. And lots of times, listen, sometimes it's a third of what you will get trying to go out and find a new quote on your own. So that's an important question. So flood zones are something that you need to know about. And so when you see when I list something and I say, I never say, this house is not in a flood zone because all houses are in flood zones if they're in Louisiana. What you see me say is this home is not in an area that requires flood insurance. Now, in May, this past May, lots of homes that were never in a flood zone before were now deemed to be in a flood zone and have to have flood insurance. Every case is unique. Every case is different. But when I list something and I say it's not in an area that requires flood insurance, that doesn't mean that that's going to be forever. Listen, it's up to the federal government to decide every time we have a storm, every time something happens, as the coast erodes, do they decide new houses need to be in flood zones? I don't know the rhyme or the reason, but I do know in this past May, lots of places that were never in flood zones were put into flood zones and were then required to have flood insurance. It's a reality. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Remember, there are no stupid questions in real estate. Ask all your hard questions. It's the only way you're going to learn. Message me, call me. I'd love to have a conversation with you. And remember, if you're a seller, there are never enough houses for sale for the amount of buyers looking to buy. It is an amazing time to be a seller. And it's an even better time to be a buyer because you can probably get a very, very good deal. Y'all take care.